to all the Doctor Who fans out there that have fallen away from this show, let me tell you something. It is safe to come back. It is safe to come back because after 13 months of waiting, which felt like a lifetime to me, Russell T. Davies' relaunch of Doctor Who has finally come to the world's screens. The Star Beast, the first of three 60th anniversary specials, aired on the BBC this past Saturday. It launched with the BBC broadcasting at 6.30 p.m. England time, but at the same time a virtual simulcast occurred when the episode was dropped to their UK streaming service and worldwide through Disney+. Plus. So at the same time, it was like a lever was pulled and the BBC told the world that the doctor was back for everyone to see. What the hell? Now, building up to this, a lot of commentary was about the excitement for the return of Catherine Tate as Donna Noble and David Tennant now playing a 14th doctor. But what I was getting excited about was not just the return of Donna as a companion. <sighs> I was getting pumped by the fact that the BBC was also building up excitement about the stories but not every Doctor Who fan was excited and the show has been losing viewers. And when I've been talking to some of the show's fans, some of them were saying the phrase, I stopped watching at, and most would identify a character with the simple reason that they just didn't like them. But what didn't they really like, the character or the story? And I think the BBC was aware that story needed to be in the forefront of this return. So as the 60th approached, the BBC went on information blitz about the stories that were coming. I likened it to sending up a flare, calling back the fallaway fans. And I feel like this because I almost walked away too, for one simple reason. Tegan. It stopped being fun, Doctor. Now, in 1989, the BBC gave us no choice in walking away when they pulled the plug on classic Doctor Who, but knew who had the full support of the BBC right from the 2002 announcement of its return. And when it premiered with Rose, Davies had hit the ground running, literally. Run. But as time went on, the show started becoming darker in their stories. There's an old running gag about the classic show that it was a show that made you hide behind the sofa, but the stories weren't supposed to keep you there. I really started feeling overwhelmed by the darkness in the last series of Peter Capaldi's 12th Doctor. The story arcs got so dark that I can barely watch the season knowing where it ends up for each of the characters. I mean, I've talked about the idea of creating a character you love and beating the hell out of them, but I watched these stories and wondered when did Moffat first start hating his character? The man who finished his first episode of New Who with the line, Today Everybody Lives, sure went on a killing spree. Everybody lives, Rose. Just this once. Everybody lives. Then the darkness overtook the overall design of the show. The ultimate dark time for me was when the titles changed to a dark purple blob, the theme took on an ominous bass tone, and the TARDIS felt like the 13th Doctor hadn't paid the electric bill. The only thing missing was Avashta Narada yelling, Hey, who turned out the lights? Hey, who turned out the lights? The darkness of the story arcs and the bleakness of the production made me, a fan that flew excited England for the 50th anniversary, want to just walk away as well. Oddly, what kept me still watching was a sports adage. You don't give up on your team just because they have some losing seasons. It was also clear as I watched that the person playing the doctor was giving it their all with what they had. I kept in mind the change was part of the norm and had it not been for the willingness of the BBC to continue after the departure of William Hartnell, the first doctor, and the ingenuity of the writers come up with the idea of regeneration, this show would have ended in 1966 with the original doctor dead on the floor, roll silent credits. Wow, that got dark. Okay, so I direct this to the Doctor Who fans who over the years have wandered away, but also the fans that stayed and the ones newly formed. The reason I'm saying it's safe is the darkness seems to be lifting. We have the old face of Russell T. Davies back in command, and he brought back the old face that morphed into Matt Smith at the end of Davies' first time as showrunner. Davies has been adamant that it might be David Tennant's face, but this is a new 14th incarnation. The show itself is also a new incarnation, but we'll never forget its history. And this was certainly made clear with the Star Beast. Going back to the early days of Doctor Who, Davies crafted a story about a cute looking creature identified as the Meep that was based on a story first published in 1980 in Doctor Who Weekly. 
The Meep is a creature that might be known by Ardent fans, but you don't need to know anything about it to follow the story. And this is similar how Davies relaunched the show in 2005. Then it was the Autons. They were the first aliens encountered at the introduction of John Pertwee's third Doctor. Also, that was an honor of Doctor Who's past. The BBC wanted to make sure to retain fans from the change from the second to the third Doctor, but also the BBC was now broadcasting in color. So the production brought back a familiar face from the time of the second Doctor, Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart, and the secret organization known as UNIT, an old face to launch a new Doctor. In a great parallel to this, Davies brought back UNIT and the daughter of the Brigadier. She was introduced during the 11th Doctor's go-round. Davies even successfully reintroduced the potato-headed aliens, the Santarans. Davies knew that with his return, he needed to tie up a very painful loose end. At the end of Davies' last full season, he literally abandoned the character of Donna to a fate she did not deserve. To save Donna from dying, the doctor erased her memory and warned her family if she ever remembers him, she will die. I had to wipe her memory to save her life. No! If she remembers me, she will die. But her family remembered him, and this raised an interesting question. How did not being able to talk about the doctor or her forgotten reality affect her family as time passed? The Star Beast takes this on directly like a slap in the face. But with everything I said, I still recognize that good stories need conflict and danger, with lives saved and lost. But for Doctor Who to work, the characters need to relish the adventure, have a resolute focus on the danger at hand, and revel in the knowledge of the lives they saved, not make it feel like the Doctor and the audience need therapy after each story. Now, it's taken me a little time and three viewings to formulate my thoughts. I don't know what is going to happen next. As a fan, I feel the darkness is lifting. But as a storyteller, I know that to recognize the light, you must have some darkness. So, if you need me, I'll be behind the sofa, just in case I'm wrong.